Our scripture passage today comes from Colossians 3, verses 12 through 17. Let us listen for the word of God. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you. So you must also forgive. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your heart, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much. And before I begin, I want to thank Morgan Trepa and Kevin and Wes Carroll for staying and providing music for our time of reflection today. They'll be doing the song season of, Seasons of Love at the end of the sermon. So now, welcome to International Associate Pastors Preaching Sunday. <laughs> you know the Sunday after Christmas Eve, the Sunday after the huge Advent buildup, and the Sunday where we go, so what is now? The Sunday where we're all kind of tired, we're all kind of questioning, where do we go from here? We've had this amazing experience, this Advent buildup to Christmas Eve and Christ's birth, and now we come to the what now let down after Christmas. Maybe it's because we are all tired and only got three hours of sleep on Christmas Eve the way I did. Or maybe it's because there's this awkward Sunday between Christ's glorious birth and the Sunday where we celebrate the Magi's arrival. Whatever it is, on Christmas I hit my limit. Now this isn't really what you're thinking. I hit the storage limit on my iPhone. I ignored my husband's generous offers to buy me a new phone for Christmas and then was faced with this harsh reality of going through all of my photos and videos, deciding which ones to delete or keep. And as I looked back, I thought, wow, what a year it's been. And I know I'm not the only one who has been doing this. We all tend to do this walk down memory lane after Christmas as we prepare for the new year. And it's the time where every news outlet out there, every magazine, newspaper, or TV show does their year in review. Even Facebook has been posting things at the top of your news feed so that you can see your most liked photo or review your history on Facebook. You can even see your first photo that you ever posted on the site. Now I tend to ignore these things, not because I don't want to know. Well actually, maybe I just don't want to know. <laughs> maybe I don't want to know if there's things in my past year that I haven't exactly done right. Have I always made the right decisions? Have I always said the right things? Have I always done the right things? Have I chosen to love my neighbor over my own self-interest? Or have my own self-interest taken precedence over something or someone else's needs? What about you? What has this past year been made up of for you? Has it been a year of blessings? A year of challenges? A year of pain and heartbreak? A year where you have grieved? Or a year where you have celebrated? What have you lost this year? What have you gained? Will they come out equal at the end of the year? 
or will you be in debt to this past year? As I've thought about this past year, I've thought about what a roller coaster it has been. From my boys finally getting to move to Illinois, to putting my life back together, to finding a partner in life and what a blessing that has been, to buying a home and putting down roots so that I can learn and grow and be in ministry with you every day. And thinking about all these changes is tiring. And I'm not the only one. There's been lots of changes this year for everyone. I thought about the staff here at First Presbyterian and all the changes that they've gone through. New calls, homes being sold and bought, seven moves, a new baby, new friends, new ministry focuses. But why stop there? What about all those new stories that have filled our lives this past year? The ones that have touched our lives, transformed us, called us to be outraged, broken our hearts, or left us questioning our own existence. So what has this past year meant for you? We've arrived here on this last Sunday of the year after Christmas, where we're in this unique place of looking back and looking forward. It's in this in-between time of taking off the old and putting on the new. The in-between time where we try to prepare for a new year, but we have the weight of the past year still very present with us. And this is where Paul addresses the community in Colossians. In his letter, Paul takes the opportunity to remind the community that while they're in this tr transition, this in-between time of old and new, that they're not supposed to idly sit back and wait for what's going to happen or occur. That as Christians, as God's chosen ones, we live in an in-between time of urgency and complacency, where we see the world through the news stories that tear us apart. Like the news story of the nine-year-old boy who was shot in an alley not far from here by his father's rival gang members. Or the news story of 128 innocent people killed in Paris by terrorists. Or what about seeing it through new eyes, the story of nine people killed in a hate-filled murder as they attended Bible study in Charleston. And we wonder, what has this world come to? For us, we live in this in-between time where we see things in a new way, where we see the suffering of the world, we feel it and we live it, and yet we also live in hope Hope because we have celebrated Christ's birth. Hope because we know the good news of Christ's death and resurrection. Hope because we are a people who are called to live into the resurrection with new eyes, new faith, and new life. Therefore, the world will never look the same again for us because we are not limited to the things of this world, but we have new hope for what the church can be and what the world can be. As Christians, we are called to live into this new year with a sense of urgency that this world is not what God has meant it to be and knowing that God has called us to be the change that we want to see in the new year. In the musical Rent, there is a song called Seasons of Love, and it talks about there's 525,600 minutes to a year. And it talks about how do we measure our life? Is it in cups of coffee? Is it in cups of conversation? The journeys that we have taken? So, how will you allow the next 525,600 minutes define you? Will it be the past that defines your next year? 
or will you live the next 525,600 minutes focused on choosing love? Will you choose to live those 525,600 minutes in a state of in-between? Or will you choose to live the message of Christ's birth those entire 525,600 minutes? Let us pray. God of new beginnings, we gather here with hope for the future that you are very present with us in all that we do and say. As we reflect upon the past year and what we have done, help us to learn from those things that we have left undone. Help us to see things with new eyes, with new life, so that we may continue to spread your love and grace in all that we do and say. Help us to see each new story in different ways, so that we may be your hands in the world. For it's in your name we pray. Amen.